So now let's take a look at excitable tissues. These are the muscular and nervous tissues. Now, excitability is a characteristic of all living cells. They develop to the highest degree in nervous and muscular tissue. The reason for this excitability is that there's a potential difference across the membrane of all cells, it's known as the membrane potential. This electrical charge or voltage difference that occurs across the plasma membrane is the basis of their excitation. We'll spend more time looking at this later on in the semester. Excitable cells respond quickly to the outside stimulus by means of changes in this membrane potential. In nerves, these changes result in rapid transmission of signals to other cells. And in muscles, the changes result in contraction or shortening of the cell. Nervous tissue is specialized for communication by electrical and chemical signals. So they'll conduct electrical signals along their lengths and then communicate with other neurons through chemical signals at the synapse. They consist of neurons or nerve cells which detect stimuli and respond quickly and transmit coded information onto other cells. There are also neuroglia, a huge family of cells that act in support of nerve cells. They protect and assist the neurons. They're basically the housekeepers of the nervous system. The neuron has three main parts. The neurosoma, or cell body, that you would see here. Dendrites, which are short branched processes that receive signals from other cells. And they'll transmit the message into the soma. And if there's enough stimulus, then the signal will be transmitted along the axon of the nerve fiber here. That's where the outgoing signal goes to other cells. And these can be more than a meter long. The soma is the only place that houses any of the organelles. So everything that the cell needs to get accomplished happens up in the soma. So if any metabolic things are needed, at the distal end, then they have to travel a long way. So muscular tissue consists of elongated cells that are specialized to contract in response to stimulation, say from a neuron. The primary job is to exert physical force on other tissues or organs. So for example, a biceps muscle might exert force on the bones of the arm in order to bend at the elbow joint, or the bladder may contract to expel urine. So basically, muscular tissue creates movements. Those could be involved in body and limb movement, certainly in digestion, waste elimination, breathing, speech, and blood circulation. So muscle tissue is imminently important. It's an important source of body heat. There are three types of skeletal muscle we'll take a brief look at here, and again, we'll revisit them later in the semester. The skeletal muscle, they're long thread-like cells. You can see them here. Most skeletal muscles are attached from bone to bone. The exceptions are in the tongue, the upper esophagus, some of the facial muscles that are involved in just facial expression, some sphincter muscles like cuff-like muscles that open and close different body passages at the anus, for example. They contain multiple nuclei, which are squished up adjacent to the pl plasma membrane because they're full of protein content. Skeletal muscle is striated, meaning it's striped, as you see here in the figure on the bottom right. We'll see why those stripes are there when we move into the chapter on muscle. Skeletal muscles are also voluntary. That means we have conscious control over the muscle movements. Cardiac muscle is limited just to the heart. The myocytes, the muscle cells, are called cardiocytes. They're much shorter and they're branched. They're notched at each end and they contain one centrally located nucleus. These cells are joined by intercalated discs. And this provides a means for electrical stimulation to pass from one cell to the other. They are also striated, but they're involuntary, so not under conscious control. So the big difference between skeletal muscle and cardiac muscle is that we see cardiac muscle has branched cells, they have one nucleus, and they are involuntary, whereas skeletal muscle has multiple nuclei, 
they're much larger, they're not forked, and they are purely voluntary. The third type of muscle is also involuntary. It's smooth muscle. Smooth muscle lacks striations. They're relatively short fusiform cells. Fusiform means that they're thick in the middle and tapered at each end. You can see those highlighted here in the figure to the right. These are visceral muscles. They form layers of the digestive, respiratory, and urinary tracts, like blood vessels, the uterus, and other viscera. Smooth muscle is primarily involved in propelling contents through an organ, like food through the small intestine. They also regulate the diameter of blood vessels, so we can raise or lower blood pressure by constricting the vessels. So now you have a complete view of all the different tissue types. So go ahead and add the excitable tissues to your list. Now you're ready to get on with your project. Remember, in this project, you want to show me a real histology slide, like the one here on the left. You want to show me a slide with the cartoon version, so you can do it in a similar manner as the text has done, or you could draw your own. And you want to identify specifically what's going on in that tissue. So where are the smooth muscle cells exactly? And maybe some of the features of each of those. This is more important in tissues like simple cuboidal epithelium or stratified squamous epithelium. Sometimes all you're looking at is a slide of pink with purple stuff in it. Now what are those pink and purple things and which cells specifically are the epithelial cells? In one slide you might see more than just one type of tissue, say cuboidal epithelium. Probably it's resting on a layer of areolar tissue also. So you might be able to use the same slide to label multiple different tissue types. Be creative with this project. Have some fun. And I'll see you in a moment when we'll move on to the next section where we'll look at intercellular junctions, glands, and membranes.